Hey guys, Cal Torak here. And today I want to show you my solo stockades XP boost I have been doing on my mage in Season of Discovery. It is a really fun farm and is very good XP per hour. Depending on your drops, it can also be pretty good gold. As of right now, this is what I'll be doing at the start of Phase 2 for leveling 25 to 40. While this is also a great solo farm, it is also a great boosting method as well. I came in here with my Warlock buddy and he was getting some pretty good XP per hour. I was far from efficient. I'll go over those values at the end of the video. Before I get into that, a quick message from today's sponsor, me. I am the co-founder of my own indie game studio called Cluck Games. Our first game is now on Steam in early access called Castle Warriors. It is a strategy army building auto battler inspired by old StarCraft custom games and vampire survivors. We are currently in the process of rebuilding our game from the ground up, changing a lot of the balance and design based off our players' feedback. We plan on launching our revamp patch in early 2024 with new maps, game modes, factions, and more. If this art style or auto battlers appeal to you, check out our Steam page. I appreciate you guys listening to this message. Now, back to the video. Okay, let's take a look at our talents and runes. These are the talents I am currently using in this video. This is my Arcane Raid PvE spec, and I find it works very well on this farm. Clear casting is great, especially for the larger sized pulls. Improved Arcane Explosion and Wand Specialization are nice, but not necessary. Onto the runes. This is the standard AoE farm setup right now. The build centers around Living Flame, Regeneration, and Living Bomb. If you are new to using this setup, check out my AoE farm guide. It goes over all the basics for using these runes there, Link in the description. I also use this new handy weak aura, which tracks the number of mobs standing in my living flame as well as a timer remaining on my beacon. Shout out to KVNB, a horde mage YouTuber, for making this weak aura. You can find a link to his YouTube channel in the description. The core of this AoE farm revolves around two phases. I call them the juggle phase and the kill phase. The juggle phase revolves around these two corners right here. As you can see from this clip, when you are standing on these corners, the mobs decide to take a very interesting path to get to you. The only way they can reach you is from the side of the walls here and here. So when you are standing on these points, they will be forced to path down the sides of the walls. You will see me dancing between these two corners at the start of the pull to get these mobs as clumped as possible. At the start of the pull, I will drag all the mobs to the right wall. The right wall is really nice for getting the mobs as stacked as possible. I will then jump back and forth between the left and right corners to get the mobs stacked. Once they are clumped, I will use Living Flame, start tab targeting Living Bomb on all the mobs, while using the left corner to the juggle the mobs back around like this. When slowing down the gameplay, you can see the mobs make two distinct turns. And understanding these turns is key to juggling the mobs. First, when you step onto the corner, they will head to this corner here. Once they've officially reached this corner, they will turn and attempt to run to the left wall over here. This is where you want to juggle them by taking a few steps off the ledge to the right, this will make the mobs now path directly towards you. Once they are heading towards you, you immediately want to step back onto the wall to get them back towards the right corner. As you can see when juggling the mobs like this, they are constantly taking damage from Living Flame, maximizing your uptime. Warning though, sometimes it looks like the mobs are going at a weird angle, but they will still always follow the two turn rule. Next, you want to make sure you avoid the mobs getting all the way to the left wall, because once they do, their pathing will break from the rest and they will start taking a longer route to reset. This will split up the mobs and ultimately end up with you taking lots of damage. If this does happen, I run to the right corner, get them to chase me to the right wall, then reset back to the left. Sometimes you need to do this juggle a few times to get the mobs reclumped, just like the start of the pool. Once you get the hang of clumping up these mobs as well as dancing between these corners, the farm becomes very easy. Now, let's move on to the kill phase. I usually start preparing for the kill phase when the mobs are around 30%. The reason you have to prepare for the kill phase is because when the mobs reach low health, they begin to run away. You want to try and have all the mobs running away at once, because if a mob starts running away long before the others, it will more than likely lead to your death. In stockades, when the mobs run away, they will often end up running outside of the instance behind you. This is annoying for two reasons. One, this causes line of sight. You are not able to attack the mobs once they are outside of the instance portal. 2. When they return from running back, they will end up on your backside. At this point, you are probably out of mana and not able to keep yourself alive. 
and why I make sure I am as prepared as possible before going into the kill phase. When I am ready to begin the kill phase, I check to make sure Living Flame is almost off cooldown. I then start by spreading Living Bomb to as many mobs as I can, making sure my mana doesn't get too low. I will then Frost Nova, Living Flame, and begin to Arcane Explosion spam. Your goal during this burst window is to get all the mobs running in fear. Once all the mobs are running in fear, immediately begin to kill the ones that are going down the stairs. You won't be able to kill the ones behind the instance portal because of the line of sight issue. This will give you plenty of space to be prepared for the returning mobs once they come back down the portal. The execution of this kill phase is very important. Once you have this mastered, that's really it. Here is a breakdown of a standard pull for me. I start the pull by aggroing usually 6 to 8 mobs, saving my blink for returning to the portal. It's okay to take damage here, as Living Flame should top you off once in the fight. I always start by going to the back right corner. Doing this causes the mobs to run up the right side of the wall, and I found this side is easy for getting them clumped initially. Once they are clumped, I stick entirely to the left side, juggling like this. Do your best to keep the mobs in Living Flame for as long as possible. Keep tab pumping Living Bombs into the mobs until around 40%. This is when I start saving mana, waiting for the next Living Flame cooldown before initiating the kill phase. When I'm ready for the kill phase, it's time for the Living Bomb spam, Nova, Living Flame, and Spam Arcane Explosion. And that's it. Rinse and repeat. I can currently get 35-ish mobs in 12 minutes. 12 minutes is the key number you want to aim for, as 12-minute resets allow you to consistently spam the dungeon while avoiding the 5 dungeons per hour limit. As far as boosting is concerned, I came in here with my 23 Warlock friend and boosted him to 25. Here are the XP rates he was getting. Small note though, while I was boosting him, I was really struggling with the farm. I am way more efficient now and able to handle two more pulls in the time I was doing it with him then. With him not helping me kill the mobs, he was averaging 22,000 XP per hour. With him helping me out, he was getting 33,000 XP per hour. This is an incredible boost for 19 to 25, and I'm super excited to try it out at the start of phase two getting all that juicy solo experience. I'm hoping to sit in stockades from 25 to maybe 30 s with each level up making the farm easier and faster to do. In terms of gold, unless you are selling boosts, it's very RNG dependent. Really comes down to the loot you get. I've gotten some pretty incredible BOE blues though, including Magician's Mantle, which I sold for 50 gold. I am going to end this video with around 10 minutes of uncut footage of me doing this farm. If you like the video or what I'm doing here for Seasonal Discovery, Please give the video a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe. Thanks.